My name is Veronica Worth, and I remember myself as a quiet and shy girl. I may have been this way because I didn't have mom or dad, or maybe because I was ashamed of the fact that I didn't have enough food in my house because my grandma didn't get paid. Or maybe I was this way because I got sexually abused. But honestly, all of these things were the reasons that I started to build up the walls. When I was three months old, my parents left me and my two-year-old brother in a cold apartment. They were running from trouble. For a year, I lived in an orphanage while my grandma was trying to figure out how to gain custody. My grandma decided to take me because someone wanted to adopt me, but she wanted my brother and I to stay together. She worked very hard to provide for us. And I remember me and my brother going out to pick up beer bottles so that we could support our grandma with some money. When I went to school, I never understood why everyone had parents, but I didn't. I was very sad and many times asked grandma why, but I was given the same answer every time. Your parents are busy earning money for you. It never happened though. My dad was a drug dealer and mom was addicted to drugs. The kids at school bullied me for not having parents. They would say that I'm so worthless that even my parents left me. My brother also started to say that if I wouldn't have been born, he would still have a loving family. I started to believe how all of that was true. When I heard that two of my sisters that I kept in contact with were in, that were in an orphanage are getting adopted to America, I was very thankful for it but I hated the people who were going to adopt them because I thought that I will not see them again. However, a couple days later, I got to meet my sister's adoptive parents and they invited me to come and visit them in America next summer. I didn't think they meant it. In October 2015, my sister's dad came to Latvia to finalize girls' adoption and since he was coming alone, he asked me if I would like to join, join him in a church service that my sisters used to attend. I told him that I would love to, but in all honesty, I, honesty, I didn't want to. So I stayed up all night watching TV and two hours before I had to leave my house, I fell asleep. Miraculously, after having one hour of sleep, I woke up full of energy. So I decided to go to church. In winter time, I got invited to a conference in Riga where I decided to accept Jesus as my savior. That day, I heard clear message saying that God wants me. For my father and my mother have forsaken me, but the Lord will take me in, Psalm 27:10. When I came to America, my sister's parents asked me if they're able to, if, they're, if they can treat me as their child. This was where the hardship and beauty of receiving love began. I was attached to many people, but I never knew how to love, how to truly love. Because of many people being gracious to me, I didn't understand what is going on. Probably because I didn't know what grace is or how love looks. I would have a lot of panic attacks, but slowly my parents gained my trust and they were willing to walk with me through my hardships. I learned how to use my words and ex express my feelings instead of building up the walls. I connected with people around me and got to know who they actually were and how much they loved me. For John 4:19 says, we love because he first loved us. Through my sister's parents, I got to know who God is and what is his plan for me. A couple months later, I asked my sister's parents if they would adopt me too. They said that they had already loved me as their child and they would love to have me permanently in their family. Since then, I have lived with them and I have been safe and loved no matter what happened. What has happened to me has shaped the way that I think and the way that I do things. I didn't share what is in, on my mind because I was afraid to get hurt. I was building walls because I didn't want anyone to see what is inside. I was ashamed and I believed 
in many lies that people have told me. I believed that I am a mistake and that I didn't deserve to be safe, loved, or alive. God gave me a new perspective about myself when he adopted me into his family. Now looking back helps me to see that what people have done to me doesn't define who I am. It doesn't mean that it, it was my fault or that I am a mistake. For Psalm 139 says, you made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your work mastership is marvelous, how well I know it. From living with loving people, I learned that hurt people hurt people, that I can't change what other people do, but I definitely can change the way that I treat others and the way that I look at them. I believe that being ma mad at someone or hating them is a poison. The problem with it is that the only person who suffers from it is me. Colossians 3.13 says, bear with each other and forgive one another. If, you, if any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. I believe that what is inside comes out no matter how hard you try to hide it. I believe that we live in a broken world, but what matters is that we can change it by loving each other and walking through hardships with each other because it is what Jesus did for us. The heaviness of your story has been heavy on my heart, as you know. And at times it can be really hard to listen to, but I love that you are strong enough and you're brave enough to continue sharing. Because you should. It's God's work. And I'm so, so proud of you. And when it comes down to how the Lord says there's power and weakness, you got some serious power, girlfriend. <laughs> and I'm just, again, so proud of you. And it is a blessing and an honor that you chose me to baptize you. I am overjoyed. And I'm psyched. <laughs> so, in his name, in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I baptize you.